and all them, but you don't honor living revolutionaries standing in a key position to make social change today. You can look at their lives and qualify the integrity that they have to revolutionary transformation. And you're telling me you don't support them, but you support Malcolm? You're a hypocrite. If you support Malcolm, you support living Malcolms. If you support Fred Hampton, you support living Fred Hamptons. If you support Yahweh bin Yahweh, you support living Yahweh bin Yahweh's. If not, you don't support them at all. And you would not have supported them when they were alive. A lot of people, I supported Malcolm. And I love Malcolm and I'm a real Malcolm person. But you didn't stand in front of Malcolm and get them bullets though. But now you love Malcolm. You didn't try to neutralize the negativity surrounding Malcolm's death when you was walking around on the plush green earth. But now that now he's gone, you love Malcolm and you knew Malcolm. Bullshit. We're tired of that type of bullshit. If you love revolution and nation building and you love existing revolutionaries and existing nation builders, not just perpetuating some type of spooked out legacy or tradition. But you know, if you're walking across that street, Malcolm X ain't going to save you from getting hit by a car. You need a living person to do it. If we have problems in our community today, you can't run to Malcolm X. You can't run to these people who have made their transitions. You have to deal with living people and their spirit is alive in the living people. Huh? They're not dead because their spirit is inside of the living. And if you respect them, you respect the living energy that is embodied within the people that are on the earth. So my point is, we cannot make revolution by supporting Malcolm's ideas. We cannot make revolution by supporting Kali Muhammad's ideas. We make revolution by supporting living revolutionaries living revolutionaries that are, that are ready to lead with the intelligence, with the strategy, with the dedication that are ready to lead the people out of this possessiveness of their oppressor. Support living revolutionaries. Study everything. Study everybody. Support living revolutionaries. Matter of fact, Go beyond supporting a living revolution and be one. And that's the majority of the necessary support is you being one. So these people who talk about legacy, and I love Malcolm and I love these people. Today they're, they, 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 they're Malcolm's that have come. You can show your integrity to the cause and to the principle of which these people stood by how you address the living today. So when people talk about unity and we need to unify, are you really putting yourself in a position? Are you really willing to step in a key place to hold up a significant part of revolutionary development? Or did you just saying that because it sounds good? Because if they come to you and people have come to us in manners of conditions that I would not even begin to divulge over this DVD, over this camera. But we have been there tried and true for those people in the conditions that they have come from and they needed the help of revolutionaries and nationalists. We are there for them. So we're not just talking idealism. We, we, we know we can see Asada Shakur today in the young system. Huh? We can see Harriet Tubman in, the, in, our, young, in our sisters today. We can see Nanny and the Maroons in our sisters today. Because they're here today. And they're in conditions and situations of which their consciousness must be evolved to play those necessary positions in the revolutionary transformation of our people. Revolution isn't dead. It reincarnates itself in the living spirit of the people to bring about social change. So we have to recognize that in the manifestation of the people that are before us, or otherwise, we're killing the revolution in our attachment to the past. We're killing it. Because it ain't here no more. It's just something Malcolm was talking about. Something from the 70s. Niggas ain't doing nothing today. This is the general attitude. You're wrong. Black people are doing something today. And you'll be surprised. 
if it's people standing on this earth now more powerful and more intelligent than anyone that you claim to worship from the past. They before you. And do you have to wait till those individuals are gone to realize how great the contribution of who they were and what they made to the planet? Are you going to wait for their transition? Are you going to be on the front line? Because power, positive energy needs positive energy to expand. We all can do a lot. But when we all put our energy together to create something, it will go farther than the growth of what any individual can do. Period. When we, put, we bring our, individual to, our energy to the table. So this whole concept of false unification, we're going to unify together. We should come to the aid of one another for revolutionary transformation. We should be at the aid of each other. Specifically, not just slapping hands and doing neat handshakes and saying black power and standing around at a festival or an event, but when your brother call you, when your sister call you and come to you, brother, this is what I need to do to get this to this particular point. We need your assistance to do this. When you stand up there, that's revolution. The rest, take your ass back to work. Go back to school. You know what I'm saying? Go back and, and be with the white man. And just come and, 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 and celebrate. And come to a Kwanzaa festival. You know what I'm saying? Literally. Come and put your dashiki on and walk around for a few minutes. And when the event is over, take your ass back to the white man. But if you're serious about revolution, you will be in a key position when you are needed. Everybody sound cool, sound deep, but when it comes down to a needful situation, then you find out, well, I don't know about that. That's your moment. What if the people who had got Asada Shakur out of jail had said, I don't know, I got something to do? Huh? But they ideologically, the imagery is there, but when you, when you need it for assistance, it's, I don't know, brother. That, ha that mentality has to change. So we don't want no superficial unity with some iconic nationalistic figure. It's people that are unknown, that nobody know about, whose contribution to this is just as significant to who you think the revolution is coming from. A homeless man on a damn street will be more of service to you than some of these iconic nationalistic figures. Because you know what? They will do all that they really can do. And your iconic figures won't do the least that they could really do to help a nationalistic movement actually expand. But they don't want a nationalistic movement. They want a successful black business. Do you know what I'm saying? And they make you think that, oh, well, I'm, failing at causing, I'm failing at causing a revolution. I don't know what to do. We need unity. No, you're succeeding at having a black businesses. You're not failing at revolution. You've never even tried it. And their job is to discourage you from revolution, to incorporate you into successful black entrepreneurship. Huh? So everything that they're telling you, this ain't going to work. The CIA going to get you. The FBI, they got something for niggas like you. This is to discourage you so that you can settle for a mediocre entrepreneurship, entrepreneur. So you can settle for that and give up your vision for constructive change of the people. How many of us have a, a vision for complete and total constructive change of our community? I'm not selling for no goddamn business. I'm not selling for no vending booth at no goddamn festival. That's not enough for me. I don't want a business or just a nice event or just a nice lecture where a lot of people came out. I must see constructive change manifested in the community and I have no excuse because I'm here to create it. So I can't accept these excuses of these successful businessmen because when it comes to running a business they know exactly what to do. When you talk about revolution, it gets real obscure. It gets real obscure. So my whole point is, is that revolution is possible. Constructive change, unavoidable. And it's not hard. 
it just de- it, it, deter- it depends on where the real heart and integrity 